Hello everyone, I am Crawlers and I thought I'd do a short After Effects tutorial. Um, the thing is, right now I'm making a couple of uh, backgrounds in After Effects. I'm thinking of giving away uh, when I reach 500 subscribers, you know, which should be soon enough. Uh, now, as I was making this background with several layers of uh, particular and such, I wanted to make the final render as small as I could. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, if I make it short, like 10 seconds and such, I wanted the final render, uh, what, I thought it would be pretty useless, you know. Uh, so, uh, then I thought, uh, my next thought would, was to make it loopable. So basically, uh, you know, uh, you could download the background, uh, put it end to end, pardon my French, and make it as long as you want. So, uh, you know, basically Viagra. But that's an entirely different video. Uh, for now, you can see that when I play the uh, three loops next to each other, uh, they pretty much uh, loop seamlessly in the middle there. So, they play with each other quite well. So, um, here's the thing, uh, you can loop an animation in uh, many different ways. Uh, you can duplicate the layer and, um, you know, reverse it or use Twixter on it, but uh, there's always going to be an abrupt, an abrupt step uh, in the middle between the loops. A twitch, you know, that won't be too subtle. Basically, it's gonna look like 10 pounds of shit in a 5 pound bag. Uh, you can also animate the motion particles themselves, uh, you know, to have the same value at the beginning and an end, and then some uh, random value in the middle, so they'll, uh, you know, move, then slow down, then move backwards to the starting point. Uh, you know, but what do you do if your uh, particles are moving with the wind turbulence and there's no set value to animate? Well, then you use the loop out function. And um, apparently, After Effects has it built in. And uh, I've just found this out myself. Uh, to use the loop function, you first need to set two keyframes for your animation. Uh, now, these keyframes can be for anything that you want to repeat, like uh, position or time or whatever. Well, in my case, I am going to use time remap. So, uh, let's first take this um, pre-comp with all the particles and just stick it into a new comp. Now, since I uh, made the particles to generate on in one second, I will cut off the first second of the animation and move that to the beginning. Uh, the Animation is now 10 seconds long, but that really doesn't matter because I am going to use uh, the first 5 seconds to loop it anyway for, for this uh, lesson today. So, uh, right now I am going to go and um, enable uh, time remapping. I will now set uh, one keyframe at the beginning of the um, where I want the loop to begin and one keyframe at the end of where I want the loop to end. I will delete all the other keyframes. There's one more before. So I will delete it right now. Um, by the way, uh, to make the loop slow down as it comes to um, these points, uh, you can make the these keyframes uh, easy, easy if you go to Keyframe Assistant. And what that, that will do is they will sort of speed up, then slow down as they come to um, these keyframes, and they will just, you know, uh, make it look a bit better. Um, okay, now to, uh, for the loop itself, I'm going to alt-click this stopwatch so I can write in this uh, equation, and I'm going to write uh, loop out and then parentheses, and then in quotes the, oops, I forgot the O, 
uh, and then in quotes the um, operator that I that I want the loop out uh, to use. And now uh, loop out has a couple of operators which I'm going to go through uh, for you right now, so you can uh, you know impress girls with the knowledge that you know how to uh, loop things. Obviously, it's going to give me an error because I haven't finished writing the loop out. Uh, but right now I'm going to go and explain uh, what they are using this uh, arrow picture. Okay, now as you can see, this is just a regular picture of an arrow that I'm going to use to uh, show you the different loop out functions. And this is just a two second long comp. And what I will do is I will keyframe the position of this arrow to loop it. So I will press position, I will keyframe at the beginning, as I want the loop to begin here, and go to one second, because that's half of the two seconds, and I kind of want to see what happens uh, right after this. And I will keyframe uh, the position of the arrow to, let's say, here. And, um, okay, now I will alt-click the stopwatch and write my... Uh, loop out equation and I will use this cycle operator for this one so let's play and see what it does okay so you can see the arrow is uh, it's moving to the end of our uh, second keyframe and then goes back to the beginning and restarts and goes over and over and over and over so what I will do is I will write create a new text right here and I will write cycle just to remember that uh, this is a cycle that we are using as an operator for this one because I am going to show you a couple more okay now um, to show you the second uh, kind of operator I'm going to uh, duplicate, press Ctrl D, the two layers, and um, let's see, I am going to take the bo both of them and move them down a bit. And um, now I'm going to go and fix the keyframes right here a little bit so I won't, uh, it won't look as ridiculous. Okay, now, um, Okay, now, um, the second operator I'm going to show you is going to be called um, Continue. And um, you can probably guess where this is going. I am going to, uh, instead of cycle in my loop uh, equation, I'm going to write Continue. And play, and let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see the as opposed to this one that loops it at the second uh, keyframe and goes to the beginning and plays it again, uh, the continue operator just, you know, uh, continues it right after the second keyframe and goes on forever uh, and into nothing, so, you know, the arrow just continues on its way. Okay, now, um, let's take, uh, let's take these two layers, duplicate them again, and um, this time, I'm going to move them both down again, uh, right here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to this keyframe and uh, fix it too. Move it somewhere here. Okay, now this operator is, going, is called ping pong. If I can just type correctly. And um, you can probably guess where this is going to. I'm going to write ping pong in the equation and play it and you can see what happens. So um, the ping pong operator seems to be the ideal one to use in our uh, particle animation because what it does it is goes to from first to second keyframe and then back to first keyframe with the same speed so it sort of uh, loops very nicely so I will go back to our uh, 
particular uh, animation and type uh, ping pong into the um, equation and uh, play it and see what it does. And um, here it is. You can see that it uh, reaches the second keyframe, slows down, stops, and then reverses direction and uh, goes with same speed to the second keyframe and then loops. So you can't really see where where it begins and ends. So when you render it out and put it next to each other, it really looks nice. Now, um, besides, I forgot to mention that besides the loop out uh, operation, uh, there is a loop in operation, which is the same as loop out, except that uh, it loops things before the first keyframe. So the way loop out, loop out works is that it loops things after the second keyframe. And as opposed to that, a loop in works by looping things before the first keyframe. So just a little tidbit there. Um, so, you know, have fun. Uh, use this knowledge wisely. Um, I have been Crawlers, please rate, subscribe and um, check out my other videos at the end of this one. Uh, thanks.